tell you, is, is robbing their place. Some girls play hard to get. How long are you two gonna go on with this? But Barry Davis knows... You don't take a girl like Robin out and bug. ...that all it takes to get the girl of your dreams is to own the car of your dreams. So you get a hot car and all your problems are solved, right? Would you like to have a car like this? Excuse me? I'm giving you this car. Riding down the highway in my dream machine. Now he's got a fast car, a hot date. Most exciting date I've ever been on. And a body in the trunk. And Barry doesn't know. <laughs> It's the fraternity on his back. All right, we both know Royal. He's in pre-med, right? This may make us sound like we're a bunch of crazed sadists. He borrows a cadaver from the college lab to scare the hell out of you, which he's done. Or a killer on his trail. Bro, is this where Barry Davis lives? Yeah, do you know what time it is? Dream Machine. It's all the thrills he ever wanted. I take a girl out on a date. You almost get killed. Gets and some he could do without. Corey Haim. Don't you, don't you look, look at the car. You can have the car. Okay, it's yours. I wish it were that easy. Dream Machine. It's the hottest car he'll ever drive. From the director of the Academy Award winning Driving Miss Daisy comes a film where two very different civilizations converge through the dreams of a special man. Johnson, why are you so bloody late? Sir, the clock is fast. Clock is stop, Johnson. A mighty road, 100 miles. That Mrs. Rudbeck is a beautiful woman. When you see her breasts, a big like pumpkin. I think we build roads, sir. These villagers around here aren't gonna work for bloody nothing, you know, they're not stupid. All workers will receive free beer. I'm gonna bleed murder you, you bastard! Did you mean to kill him then? Oh no, sir. Don't plead guilty. I guilty. The LA Times says a heartbreakingly beautiful movie with a deft glancing spirit all its own. People magazine called it a captivatingly powerful film full of honestly earned tears and laughter. Mr. Johnson from Warner Home Video. In the summer of 1861, Another flying day. Francis Ashby of Oxford University Holiday's anathema to me as you know. I shall be taking plenty of work with me. Left for a walking tour in the Swiss Alps. I shall be four and a half days travelling. I rely on you, Marlet. Look after the college. The area is a well-known part of the Chamois. It shelters amongst the rocks during the heat of the day. <laughs> Did I disturb you, sir? No, no, no. I was merely enjoying the view. In Switzerland, all that time. Whatever did you find to do? Mr. Ashby, we found the pearl! Oh. Mr. Ashby! Oh! I am told that there were ladies on college premises in the middle of the morning. Oh, you do remember us? Of course. I pleaded we were Americans, but that seemed to make matters worse. Yes, they were guests of mine, President. How old's the girl? Ah! Oh, oh, in my dress! Founders Port. Bottled the year I was born. Good evening, Mr. Ashby. Have you any idea what would happen if someone found you here? Disgrace, I suppose. Disgrace for all parties. Hey! You, sir! Stop! You must give me a solemn undertaking never to see these American friends of yours again. I wish you would tell me in plain English what you really feel, Mr. Ashby. Michael Palin, Connie Boone, Trini Alvarado, and Alfred Molina. The college likes to know where his fellows are. If they start missing their suppers, they could be getting up to all sorts of mischief. From the diaries of Michael Palin's great-grandfather. I shall put this moment away in my memory, keep it brilliant and clear. And what shall you take back with you, Mr. Ashby? American Friends.
was trouble from the very beginning. The first animal Milo met was Otis. You're a strange looking cat, Milo said. Oh, I'm not a cat, I'm a dog. Really, deep down inside, we're all cats, right? Uh, no, deep down inside, I'm a dog. Nevertheless, Milo and Otis became best friends. We're going to take a walk outside today. Going to see what we can find today. We're going to take a walk outside today. Going to see what we can find today. Milo and Otis, they're traveling far away from home. And the only way back is together. Now a puppy needs a buddy. And a kitten needs a pal. Such a great big world that's all set up For a curious cat and a pug-nosed pup Friends to meet, places to be It's all so new and fun to see Milo and Otis, two friends who share a love of adventure and the adventure of love. The Adventures of Milo and Otis Whenever you rent or buy a video, you need to be sure that the film you choose is suitable for the audience at home. To help you, there are certificates given to films which tell you broadly what the film is like. This film has been classified PG, that stands for Parental Guidance, which means that parents might want to check up on it before showing it to their younger children. If it's an action film, it might have some violence. If it's romantic, it might have some sexy scenes or very brief nudity. It might also have some of the milder swear words. Video certificates are there to give you the chance to make an informed choice. They allow you to have peace of mind and be entertained. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the film. everything here and then bring the rest in okay thank you so much no problem Lori we're back Lori Lor Lor dear Nancy and Marty my mother isn't well and wants me to come west and stay with her Thanks for being so nice to me. Please send me whatever you owe me to the below address. My love to Ariel, Lori. I just saw. Go work it out. Oh, thanks. Hello. Hi, Barbara. It's Nancy. Oh, you're back. We thought you were getting home tonight. It's Nancy. Tell them to come over. Everyone's here. Thanks, Barbara, but we came home to a problem. Lori's flown the coop. Oh. 
I think she was lonely. You know, there's nobody around here her age. No dates. Listen, I have to be in New York by tomorrow afternoon to show some of my designs. Uh, is it all right if Ariel comes home with Mindy after nursery school? I should be back by late afternoon. I can come by to pick her up then. Sure. Thanks. Uh, anytime. Bye-bye. Bye. Marty and Nancy are back. Oh, hey! Okay. Go! Go! <laughs> What's this? That's me! This is stuff I, uh, I shot in Florida. Ariel, we have Pretty to go good, home huh? tomorrow. How do you feel about that? I want to stay here. Yeah. You want to stay with your grandma and your grandpa, right? Yeah. Wave to the camera. Hello, Daddy. I love you. Who's elephant? Elephant. My girls. Okay, my huh? <laughs> we had a good time on this vacation, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. What's yeah. it? What are you doing here? I'm just shooting myself in the mirror and. Uh, you. Marty! What? Oh, I should have never given you that damn thing. Are you kidding? In my sleep. Yeah. What are you saying? My beautiful wife, sleeping. Look how gorgeous you are. Oh, God. You should remain permanently pregnant. Well, thanks a lot. Hi, baby. <laughs> Suddenly, I got nervous about which designs to show mm -hmm. them. Sorry, I woke you. No. What do you think? Sweetie, you know I like everything you do. It's no help. You like this one? Or this one? God, suddenly, they all look terrible to me. I know. You're just going to stop everything and burn your brushes. It's a shame. I know, look, you have, to, you have to visualize this design all over a blouse. It's gonna be too too busy, too fussy. You don't like it. I'm visualizing all over a blouse, right? Yeah. It's beautiful. Really? Hey, hey a family mommy. conference. Come here. Oh. What's that? That's a design for material for a blouse. You like it? Yes. See? <laughs> Thank you both. I'll give each of you a piece of the profits. Come on, let's go to bed, okay? <sighs> Mommy, I want to drink a water. Mm. <laughs> Miss Sherman, I'll be going to New York today, so Ariel's to go home with Mindy after school. Bye. Okay, Mrs. Tykes. Bye. Bye, Mommy. Listen, I am sorry to interrupt, but I'm telling you, it has turned into a nasty day out here on the island. Really? Well, nothing's happening here. Yeah, well, it is ugly here. Well, thank you. Um, I'll be, I'll, I'll be, I'll be through soon. Is it going well? Yes, it is. I'll, um, I'll tell you about it later. I'm at the carpet company. I have just one more client. I should be home by six. Oh, I'll be home long before that. I'll bring the caviar. Great. Thanks for calling, and I'll be careful. Thank you. Bye.
Honey? Nance? Ari? Hi, Nancy. It's Jean. Barbara told me you were in the city today, but I wanted to get my bed in for tennis tomorrow morning. Give me a ring, okay? This is Carpenter Memorial Hospital. Nancy Klein has been in a serious car accident. Please come to the emergency room at the hospital, and please drive carefully. Hello? Barbara? Marty. Nancy's been in a car accident. We're in the uh, hospital. Carpenter Memorial. Oh, Marty. Yeah. Her car, you know, skidded right into the other lane. And uh, I haven't seen her or the doctor yet. Uh, all I know is that it's a head injury. Uh, don't tell Ariel. Ariel's fine. She stayed over with Mindy enough not to think anything's wrong. Thanks. You stand there? He's on his way. Hello. Fred, this is Marty. Marty! Hi, um, Fred. Uh, Nancy's in the hospital. She's been in a car accident. And Nancy's in the hospital. What? Marty, what happened? Please resident Matoya, please call the operator. Please resident Matoya, please call the operator. Stan, you shouldn't have come on the night like this. Come on. Have you seen it yet? They told you anything? It's the head. Well, that could be anything. A concussion. Ariel, sound asleep. Thanks. Mr. Klein, my name is Sears. I'm head of the Department of Neurosurgery. Well, this is uh, Stan Rice, my good friend, Dr. Stan Rice. Pleasure. Would you please come with me, Mr. Klein? Dr. Sigan, ER Please have a seat. Your wife has been in a very serious car accident. The car that hit her drove the post on the passenger side all the way over across the car and impacted the right side of her head, twisting the head on the neck. There are other parts of the head that can take a severe blow and sustain relatively little damage. But the brain stem, at the base of the brain, all the nerves come together and go down the spinal column. It controls all the vital functions, consciousness, respiration, heartbeat. She's in a deep coma. That is, she's unresponsive in every way. Is she going to live? The next few days will tell us that. What's the, um... Well, first, we're going to do everything to keep her alive. <laughs> Frankly, we know so little about the brain. She might suddenly wake up. She might just as suddenly die. If she does wake up, we're just waiting and watching. There's no operation. There's no treatment. She's going to have to do it all by herself. You know that she's pregnant? Yes. But for now, we're going to treat Nancy as the primary patient who is incidentally pregnant. We're going to concentrate on keeping Nancy alive. I think you can see your wife now before they take her to intensive care. Bye, Marty. Thanks for coming, Orny. Your sister is really... I did call your mom and dad. Yeah, I'm meeting their plane tomorrow. Good. I didn't call Janet. I called her. Uh, she'll come with us tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Do you want to come? When she sends me an invitation. <laughs> um, I'm going to go and see her now. And Stan can tell you everything. Okay? Okay. Dr. Schiller. Dr. Schiller, please. They adore her. Never 
everybody who loves Zance. No, I think I want to get home. I get just some sleeping pills. Oh, Marty. Thanks so much for taking care of Ariel. She's asleep. You can stay here. I seem to want to go home. I think that Ariel should probably stay here. I can put her on the school bus in the morning with Mindy. That would be great. I called my mom. She's coming from Brooklyn tomorrow. Hi, Daddy. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Where's Mommy? Mommy was in a, a car accident. Another car hit her car. And she's in the hospital. And she's asleep. Is the baby asleep, too? I'm so sorry I didn't call you back. Stan came, and then the doctor, and... Uh, uh, tell me. It's not good, Mom. Is she gonna live? They have no idea. Oh, my God. You want me to come out tonight? Oh, no. The morning is fine. Besides, Ariel is with Barbara. But you're all alone out there. I'm fine, Mom. Well, I won't sleep. If you want to talk to someone... Uh... I'm here. Thanks. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Yeah. Bye. That's a respirator. She's not breathing on her own? At the moment, she needs some help breathing. And this is a pressure monitor catheter, in case the pressure in her head increases. And that's a heart rate monitor. When we have time, we'll massage her hands for circulation, also to keep them from stiffening. Stiffening? Yes, there's a tendency to contract. There's no change, hi. Hi, Janet. Hi, Marty. Okay, now listen. She has a lot of tubes.
<laughs> Nancy. <laughs> it's Mama. <laughs> Before she comes home, how much does Ariel know? She knows that uh, her mommy was in an accident, that she's in the hospital, and that she's asleep. And uh, what should we say to her if she starts asking questions? Uh, Fred, I should think we should... We'd... Never mind. We should all agree. How, how do you explain coma to her? I never knew anyone in a coma. I never knew anyone who knew anyone in a coma. Does Ariel know that Nancy's pregnant? Yes. Oh. I tell you, this is grotesque. Fred, please. To me, it's grotesque. Nancy lying there like that, carrying a child. I know nothing about medicine, but... But I tell you, my mind tells me that she needs... Well, all the strength that she can pull together. One day at a time, for now, for, for, for Ariel, for, for all of us. We don't even know what our roles are yet. At least I don't. And they will develop. And none of us must get sick. We're back and sleepy. That's something I can do something about. That I can take care of. <laughs> look who's Hi. here, huh? Look who's here. Look, look, look. Look, look. Look, look. look who's here. Down the air! Oh, 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 my girl. Look who's here. Elephant! Yes! Oh, she's smart. Ah, elephant, huh? Here's some yes. picture she drew for her mom. Look! <laughs> Oh, Last it? month it was Ari. <laughs> Just before she gets all wired up, mm. let's go to sleep, okay, sweetie? Come here, baby. These pictures you drew for mommy are gorgeous. Yeah. All right, say goodnight to everybody. Good night, sweetie. Good, good, good night, night, everybody. Good night, Ariel. Marty. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, I will. You know everybody's willing to help you with whatever. I know that. You're the greatest. Oh. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night everybody. Good night, everybody. Don't let the bed bugs bite. We won't. They found this bed. She likes it. She doesn't sleep in it. Well, maybe, maybe we ought to send for some more clothes. Wait. We'll need the car. Wait. What does that mean? Wait. So many things to think about, I can't think about anything. Maybe if I just think about how to get the car up here. Uh, will she live? If she lives, maybe. Think about now. 
Don't think about a year from now. How much can Marty take? The patient has been unresponsive to verbal or physical commands, that's since 12 days. Though at 48 hours, husbands think she may have squeezed his hand appropriately. Noxious response evoked more briskly from right than from left. I'm afraid I'll have to agree with the original prognosis of Dr. Sears. It's poor for recovery of an independent state, probably not better than 5%. But I wouldn't be able to make a more accurate prediction of permanent disability until about uh, three months. What about her pregnancy? Oh, I don't think the pregnancy can endanger her. In fact, she might make an ideal incubator. Well, the prognosis is guarded, but I would say that there's potential for reasonably good functional recovery present. I would say 35 to 50% chance of recovery. That's good news. What about the pregnancy? Doctor, I don't know, but I think it's wrong, her struggling there. She needs every... It, it might be in her best interest to terminate the pregnancy. Now, I would note that the quality of the infant if brought to delivery is in question. Thank you. Thank you. First, Mr. Klein, I want you to know how sympathetic we all are to your situation. It is cruel. It seems there's nobody in this hospital who doesn't feel somehow involved. At Dr. K's request, I have gathered all the records and reports here. And I have also asked the high-risk team to go over the situation and give an opinion. Well, Marty, the fetus is making good interval growth. Uh, that is just from the point of view of size. It's still too early in the pregnancy to perform other tests which would determine anything more about the um, quality that Dr. Simopoulos refers to. The general opinion here is that this pregnancy presents no immediate emergency. Well, Dr. Simopoulos said it might be in her interest to terminate the pregnancy. He did? Uh, I did not see a note of that, uh, unless I missed it. His handwriting's almost as bad as mine. Well, he, he said it to me and to Nancy's parents. He said, might be. He didn't go any further. Oh, well, he might have been thinking down the line. But as I said here, the view is that the pregnancy presents no immediate emergency. If you thought that there was an immediate emergency at this point... If a physician feels that the mother's life is at immediate risk, he or she may perform a termination of the pregnancy right then and there without any buyer leave. Well, if there's not an emergency but it's thought to be in her best interest for a better chance of eventual recovery to awaken sooner from the coma. Then you would have to go to court, be appointed her legal guardian, and...
and uh, get legal authorization. Legally, a woman pregnant less than 24 weeks can request a termination for any reason. But Mrs. Klein can't make that request. Does she lose her constitutional rights by being in a coma? I can't answer that. As Nancy's obstetrician, I told Mr. Klein that I'd go along with whatever he decides, which doesn't do him much good because I don't do second trimester abortions, and I doubt if my testimony would carry much weight in court. Do you do second trimester? Yes, up until the 18th week. Is there any danger? Well, there's a danger in any surgical procedure. But it seems to me that the further we go into the second trimester, the greater the danger. Mr. Klein, I can understand your frustration. Wanting to do something for your wife when there seems to be nothing to do but wait. Your idea is to wait for an emergency and then hope you can do something about it? Well, more than hope, we have a very experienced staff. Experienced in a pregnancy in a comatose woman? No, I doubt if many doctors are. I'm very grateful for the care that Nancy has received. But it seems to me, and it's never been said, that no one here holds out much hope for Nancy's recovery. I, I want you to know that I'm going to do everything in my power to give Nancy a chance. I want everyone to know that. My concern is for my wife and for the child we already have. I want Nancy to recover to become the mother of our child again. I understand. I was with Nancy when she gave birth to our daughter, and I look at her now with those tubes going in and those tubes coming out. And I can't see that she can survive delivering a child. I went to three of my classmates from law school who now do litigation, and they all said they'd like to take the case because it's going to be a landmark one. But they all said no. One and all said that, in effect, by the time you're through, it'll cost you around 40000 And without impressive medical testimony, you'll lose. And in this county, you'll probably lose anyway. I don't understand that. You probably never noticed, but this is a right-to-life county. The district attorney is vocally anti-abortion, and many of the judges are, too. I'd be petitioning for her constitutional right. It's a federal law. What does it matter what, what county I live in? Federal law is administered by local DAs and local judges with local attitudes. What can I tell you? Down in Florida, we have friends who have a daughter. She's a doctor, OGBYN. OBGYN. OBOG, I don't know. She's a doctor, right? A woman's doctor. She said she gave an abortion to the same woman four times. Four times and no questions asked. She told her she was stupid, but she didn't have to go to court. Nancy's your wife. She's our daughter. You signed for everything they've given her so far. So, who else should be the guardian, huh? Who else? This is to save her life. <laughs> Daddy? Yeah? I can't remember Mommy's voice. Oh. Okay. Ariel, hurry up. The school bus is here. What are you up to? No. Ariel, it's time for bed. What are you doing? <laughs> no. We're not at home just now, but if you leave a message at the sound of the beep, we'll get back to you. Wait for the beep. <laughs> Daddy, I want to see Mommy. We'll work on it. Not right away, but we'll work it out. Promise? I promise. Fran's gone home to Brooklyn for a few days. I think she's really glad to get away. I think Fred and Anne would love to get away for a breather. They just don't know how to say it. If I say it, then they'll think that I don't want them here. June? Yes? 
June, did you hear that? Yes, that happened several times when I massaged her. Go and tell the doctor. I already did. They don't think it's significant. I never heard it before. I'm sorry, Marty. It's very common. Nancy? It's Marty. Nancy? I'm here. You did it once, you can do it again. Come on. Nancy? Marty, it's Ruth and Stephen. We haven't heard from you in so long, we thought we'd get in touch. Uh, Steve's at the hospital, waiting to deliver twins. All of my patients are quiet. Hope you're both well. Give us a call. Thanks. Bye. Hello? Ruth, it's Marty. Oh, that was quick action. Have I called too late? Oh, no. Steven's still at the hospital, but I got lucky. I got home by 8. So how are both of you? You're not going to believe this. Two weeks ago, Nancy is coming back from New York. She was in a car accident. She's in the hospital now. She's in a coma. I know she's pregnant. I think I should get a report. The hospital said absolutely... Marty, Marty, maybe I can help. Well, there's no question. The pregnancy must be terminated. But, RJ, don't you want to examine her first? What's to examine? She's in a traumatic coma. She's pregnant. According to Marty, everyone at Nancy's hospital disagrees with you. I know them out there. None better. It's not always a question of medical training, but of personal prejudice. And the prejudice of the administration and the board of trustees and, 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 well. Perhaps I shouldn't say prejudice, but the bent. What do you think our chances are of getting the Bioethics Committee to let us bring her here? All right, what exactly is a Bioethics Committee? It's a committee made up of doctors, lawyers, ministers, civic leaders, nurses, etc. They meet to discuss the ethics of this or that situation, and then they advise the hospital administration. And they decide whether or not the hospital will take Nancy? They advise. It's an unusual situation, Marty. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, I've got them crossed already. I mean... We're taking Ariel to see Nancy this afternoon. She's finally asked. Good. I'm glad to hear it. I'm scared. I have no idea how she's going to react. Carpenter Memorial. I'm coming to see Marjorie. Please leave me on the floor. Thanks. 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 Okay, now. You know Mommy can't talk to you? Yes. Okay. You know that she's asleep. Yes. Is this Ariel? Yes. This is one of Mommy's nurses. She takes very good care of Mommy. You are a beautiful little girl. Thank you. You're welcome. See, See you later. later. Yes, mommy. Absolutely. We just want to wake her, okay? I'll show mommy a picture. Great idea. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why we brought your crayons and your picture book. Brought your crayons and oh, pick out your favorite color. Show mommy what you made of. <gasps> Isn't that beautiful? Sure, Mommy. Hi. Now, do you want to stay? Or do you want to come with me to the Y and we'll go swimming together? Stay. Okay. When it comes to yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, that's nice. Most of the things I do, I'm not sure about. 
I don't know, with this interruption of pregnancy, if she's going to live or die, whether she's going to remain a vegetable or recover. I do know that she has a better chance of survival if she is not pregnant. Dr. Instinctively Kent, right? and emotionally, I'm very much in favor of our doing this, but there is a question of the notoriety. Why notoriety? Well, her nurse on Mrs. Klein's floor sees she's being moved. Where to? What for? Words get around a hospital fast. You might be picketed. People chaining themselves to your doors. But they must perform abortions here every day. Yes, but if we move her here, she becomes a celebrated case, a chance for extremists to go to town. But still, if it's the right thing to do... It's probably right. Well, well I, I don't, don't know. I don't know. It seems to me this is not a medical matter at all for all of RJ's elements. The woman has a constitutional right to terminate the pregnancy for any reason prior to 24 weeks. Isn't that right? But she's not in a position to exercise that right. I don't think her hospital is out of line to require her to get a court order. Oh, no, that's X-ray tech. Oh, X-ray tech. Oh, hi. Hi. Did Ruth reach you? No. You know, I only came to one He turned us down. She couldn't tell me very much. It was all confidential, but... Well, maybe you can find out more. Yes, they are. Marty, back before Ruth and all this business up there, I, um... I was in touch with someone. Uh... Have you... Can I help you? Have you ever heard of Rita Thompson? No. Well, she's very well known. She's a, when Fred and I were living up here, she was in the papers all the time. She's a very well-known pro-choice person, you know, really active in all the women's movements. I'm, and, well, I'm really surprised that you haven't heard of her. She's here now. Because she's in her second trimester, it's 15 weeks, I believe? Oh, yeah, but... About 15. Well, we can't do anything in my clinic. But if you would give me a letter saying that you've come to me for help, I think I can find another way. Uh, a back door. What back door? Oh, well, I'd have to find one. But I think I could. Also, I'd like to mention your wife's situation at a rally I'm attending in Washington to mark the 15th anniversary of Roe versus Wade. This is an unusual case, but it dramatizes the situation of women's rights. I don't want Nancy spurred all over the newspapers. But Marty, With due Nancy... respect, I don't want Nancy to be used for somebody else's agenda. Well, I, I could mention the case without using her name. No, 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 I don't want to go through a back door. It sounds like a back alley. Nancy doesn't have to go through a back door. I am not suggesting anything illegal. We could go to another county, another state. I don't know. But I do know that if you go to court, you'll lose. So I've been told. If you lose, you'll not only lose, you'll do serious damage to the cause of women's rights. Any crack they can find in the law. Well, what about the notoriety? You'll get plenty of notoriety if you go to court. Oh, and there's no notoriety if we go through your back door? If you go to court, it will cost you a fortune and we'll all lose. If they can stop a woman in a case like this, the right to lifers will be out in full force. You've got no medical testimony. Nobody from this hospital is going to take I'm that I'm sorry. I, I really appreciate your concern. The answer is no. Oh... Hi. Marty. 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 What are we going to do if we lose in court? Nancy will be marked. No other hospital will take her. And, and how can Thompson help us then? Anne, I'm sorry. How do we know who this backdoor doctor might be? How are we going to check on him? Anne, this is a family matter. I don't want Nancy to become some rallying cry. Marty, I'm her mother. She is my wife. I'm sorry. Thanks a lot. 
No, no, I did it for myself, I assure you. Now, it's very nice of you to come all the way up here to thank me, and it's very nice to meet you, but I did it for myself. I'm sorry it didn't work out. May I ask what you plan to do next? I'm going for the court order. I don't think I have any other choice. Maybe you'd give me another chance. Maybe I could do a better job this time, do my homework. Yeah, I know I'm right, but courts are always impressed with references to case histories, if there are any. Ruth tells me that lawyers have been approached. They're wanting a great deal of money. I think I might be able to persuade an old comrade in arms of mine to take it on as I will take it on for our own satisfaction. He and I have done each other a lot of favors over the years. His name is Herb Weisfeld. And if we win, I will get you the only doctor I would allow to do a second trimester termination. He will cost you money. Petition of Martin Klein to become guardian of Nancy Klein. As I have noted, it's a matter of some urgency. We'd uh, appreciate an early hearing. Of course, Mr. Weisfeld. The judge will want to talk to the district attorney, to the attorney general, to show cause. I see you want to kill the child. Think that's enough coffee? No, I can always make more. All right. So much for privacy. What? Oh, oh my God. God. Dear Nancy, when your life comes into focus again. And it will. You will know how blessed you are with the love of Martin. The beauty of your love has been shared by strangers like myself and has restored my faith. Keep that one. Ooh, we're in the money. <laughs> Dear Martin, you're having a rough time. Have a drink on me, a good one. <laughs> Look at that, they sent us a $5 bill. saying that this courtroom is open to the public, but there are certain rules that have to be followed. Basically, they're ones of courtesy and respect. This is a court of law. It is not a forum for improper demonstrations or expressions of one's views. Let us all keep in mind that this is a very emotional and traumatic matter for the petitioner 
and the parents of Nancy Klein. At 16 weeks, a fetus is not viable. Viability of a fetus is, of course, determined by its ability to live outside the mother. Courts have ruled that a non-viable fetus is not a person and has no rights as a person. Now, were Nancy Klein well and should have wanted to terminate the pregnancy for whatever reason, it would have been a private matter between her and her physician. And no way, in no way, would the state have been involved. What we're asking for is for Martin Klein to stand in his wife's shoes to exercise her constitutional right and give consent for the termination of this pregnancy to save her life. We have two new applications. The first is a petition of Charles Davis. Is Mr. Davis present? Joan Gardner, 642 Sloan Street, New York, New York. Ms. Gardner. Your Honor, this is a petition to declare Mrs. Klein incompetent and to declare Charles Davis her guardian. Is she kidding? It is our opinion that a stranger might be the most appropriate person to be guardian, more so than the next of kin who might have conflict of interest. We'll hear the full argument later at a more appropriate time. Are there any other applications? Alan Stevenson, I represent Thomas Miller. Uh, Mr. Miller's petitioning to be named guardian of the fetus. <laughs> we feel there's uh, only one question before the court, and that is the best interest of the patient, or as we would argue, the patients, plural. This is a joke. Uh, Your Honor, the district attorney waives an opening statement. As does the assistant attorney general. At this point, I'm going to call a 10-minute recess. I don't understand. How can they just come in there and petition? Take it easy. They can. They can petition to be the guardian of my wife, our child? They have the right. When someone becomes incompetent, a person can go to court and petition to be appointed his guardian to take care of his affairs. Wouldn't that be a friend? Do you know these people? I don't know these people. Who are these people? They're the big guns in the local right to life movement. They could just delay us, couldn't they? Hold us up. Yes. How long do we have? How many? What, eight weeks? Until we won't be allowed to do anything, even if we win? That's right. It's up to the judge whether or not she allows them standing in the case. The number one cause of maternal mortality in the United States is pulmonary embolism, blood clot in the lung. Now, what augments clot formation in this woman? She is not walking. She's lying in bed. She's turned from side to side by nurses. Her hands and feet are in splints. There is absolutely no motion. And blood clot is only one possible complication. Dr. Cannon, you said at the outset there is very little literature on trauma and the vegetative state in pregnancy. Last week, I made a thorough study of the literature in the American experience. There are just two cases on record of women in coma coming to term and giving birth. In both cases, they got live babies. In both cases, the mamas died. Now, there's a notation by one of the neurologists which states I cannot tell how much function she will recover. Well, of course he can. Nor can medical science, nor can I. But what I'd like to do is to remove any possible stress from Nancy's body so she has the best possible chance of recovery. This is for life, not for abortion. This is pro-life of this patient. Your letter filed with Mr. Klein's petition in which you gave reasons why the pregnancy should be terminated was dated October 13th. Had you personally examined Mrs. Klein at that time? No. 
When did you examine her? October 16th. So, when you had formed your opinion, you had not yet yourself examined her. Is that correct? That is correct. Now, doctor, will you tell the court what techniques you would counsel for the abortion at this 16th week, second trimester stage of the pregnancy? Dilation and evacuation preceded the night before by the use of laminaria to soften the cervix. What does this procedure involve? The insertion of the laminaria the night before will cause dilation of the cervix. Can you clarify that? Laminaria are sterile pieces of seaweed like sticks. The moisture in the cervix makes them expand, causing dilation. How would the fetus be removed? Manually. Are there any risks to a woman in Mrs. Klein's condition? There are risks. But in my opinion, there is less of a risk than in continuing this pregnancy. Afternoon. This is the uh, telephone number of the physician I recommended. He's waiting for your call. Don't I need to know his name? No, you just give your name and ask for the doctor. Isn't this premature? I won't be able to be here tomorrow. Oh. Thank you very much. You were very impressive today. Whatever happens, you were right. This pregnancy should be terminated. Thanks. Thank you. So what did you say about this? You stated to Mr. Klein's attorney that in your opinion, a pregnancy could be difficult for Mrs. Klein's health if complications develop. Yes. Well, can you predict with any certainty that these complications will develop? No. Mrs. Susselman, your daughter and son-in-law were very happy about the pregnancy, correct? Yes. Did you ever discuss with any of the medical personnel at the hospital whether or not they could guarantee a perfect child? No. You never asked for a 100% guarantee of a perfect baby? No. I believe we are finished for today. We will recess until 9.30 tomorrow morning, at which time we will hear the district attorney's witnesses. And we will again take up the petitions of Mr. Davis to be guardian of Mrs. Klein and Mr. Miller to be guardian of the fetus. You know, I'm only doing this for your own good. Sweetie. You know what? I'll be right back. Okay? Thanks. Okay. And what else? Well, we made all the channels. Someone called um, Tracy Jordan wants you to appear on a TV panel show on abortion. Yeah. She left her number. London called. BBC wants an interview. That one. Read that one. Faith healer from Malaysia. Says he would gladly come to see Nancy if uh, you would send him the $2,000 airfare. You would hate it. Every inch of your body described, analyzed in detail. Every tube going into you and coming out. They want to get all the vivid details to the judge so that she can visualize exactly what's involved. Nancy. 
Nancy. Do you know that I'm with you? May I proceed with my witness, Your Honor? You may. Dr. Casey, what is your profession? I'm a physician and surgeon with a specialty in obstetrics and gynecology. And based upon your examination of Mrs. Klein, doctor, what is your opinion as to the effects of this pregnancy upon the health of Mrs. Klein? The pregnancy at this point in time has no negative effect on the patient's health. What, if any, dangers or risks are involved in this method of abortion? Danger of heavy bleeding danger of leaving part of the fetus inside. The procedure involves, essentially, breaking up the fetus. Dr. Dalton, I want to read a statement made by Dr. R.J. Cannon, professor of obstetrics and gynecology at Scribner College of Medicine. I believe with a degree of medical certainty that Mrs. Klein's pregnancy presents a serious threat to her life and that a pregnancy interruption is indicated at this time. Now, do you agree or disagree with that statement? I disagree. Will you tell us why you disagree? It is my opinion that uh, while she is at increased risk for different types of complications, the pregnancy itself is not life-threatening. Your Honor, termination of pregnancy does not equate with non-survival of the fetus. Now, if appointed, we would develop for you that the question is not whether to terminate the pregnancy, but we would develop the facts as to when the pregnancy should be terminated and how it can be done in a manner consistent with the survival of both mother and child. The testimony yesterday said that Mrs. Klein clearly planned this pregnancy and she wanted to continue this pregnancy at the time of the accident. Now, someone else's substituted judgment cannot be placed in Mrs. Klein's mouth. Mr. Klein wants to terminate the pregnancy in a manner that would result in a dead baby. That is not Mrs. Klein's wish. Does Your Honor wish to hear from the Attorney General? Yes. Counsel for Mr. Davis is arguing that the court should assume that since Mrs. Klein wanted this pregnancy, that by virtue of her having wanted it initially, she would choose to continue it under these circumstances. I think the fallacy of that argument is obvious. It is the constitutional rights and interests of Nancy Klein that are at issue in this courtroom, how best to protect them and exercise them. Thomas Miller has absolutely no connection to this family or to this case, which would grant him any special status to be appointed guardian. His papers make it clear that he is seeking to intervene for the sole purpose of advocating a particular philosophical or legal position. I'll take the ticket. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm Tracy Jordan. You may remember I called your house yesterday about oh, sure. being on a TV panel to discuss yeah. abortion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well? Miss Jordan, this might sound strange, but I don't have any views on abortion. We're just a family. I'm not an advocate of anything. This is going to be a network show. I just thought you might have things you'd like to say. At this moment, all I want to do is get on with the court business. Thank you. Just keep my number. In case you change your mind. Thank you. Insofar as the application of Mr. Miller to be guardian of the fetus is concerned, it is well-settled law, commencing with Roe v. Wade, that a fetus of less than 24 weeks is not a person and therefore not afforded protection under the 14th Amendment. So at best, the application is premature and it is not necessary to address the other question as to what guardian would be the appropriate choice. As to the application of Mr. Davis to be appointed guardian of Mrs. Klein, the court finds Mr. Davis to have no standing in this matter and his application is denied. Recognizing yes. that time is of the essence in this particular hearing. So, all memoranda of law must be submitted by tomorrow. After studying them, I will render my decision as quickly as possible. 
This court stands adjourned. Well, Excuse me. I just want to tell you how much I sympathize with you and your family. Oh, thank you. I'm strongly opposed to abortion. But my heart goes out to you. Oh. Oh. Yes, um, good evening. This is Martin Klein. May I talk to the doctor, please? One moment, please. Mr. Klein. I've been expecting your call. How are things going? Uh, it's really hard to tell. Uh, but uh, Dr. Cannon suggested I contact you because we might get a decision as early as Monday, one way or the other. When you know, make contact with your OBGYN, Dr. K, who will contact me and also make the arrangements at the hospital. I contact her and she contacts you? I don't want you to think that I'm being coy about this, not giving you my name. I do this procedure almost every day of my life. That's all I do. But in this case, my family has tried to persuade me not to take it on. The possible notoriety, repercussions from the crazies for me and my family. Uh, I understand. Uh, and I, I very much appreciate this. Uh, thank you. Good luck. I'll be waiting. Once you at the courthouse at 8.30 tomorrow. Good word. Well, in case we win, Davis and Miller have started the appeals process. How can they appeal when there's been no decision? I recognize that this is premature since the decision of the lower court will not be handed down until later today, Your Honor, but... I... this is not only premature, this is preposterous. I mean, they have been denied standing in the lower I court. I understand the decision from the lower court will be handed down at noon. Now... If you people say, as soon as you get the decision, if it's in your favor, you're going to go ahead with the abortion at once, I will grant a temporary stay of that order right now. If, however, you agree not to go ahead immediately, I will call you into the courtroom at 2 p.m. I will go over the facts, and I will let you know if I grant a stay uh, pending a hearing before the full appellate court. Based on competent medical testimony and records, the court finds that Nancy Klein is incapable of communicating and is declared to be incompetent. Also based on credible and convincing medical testimony, the court finds that as of this time, an abortion is not medically necessary to preserve the life of Nancy Klein. However, Nancy Klein, who is comatose and approximately 17 weeks pregnant, has the same constitutional rights as any otherwise healthy, approximately 17 weeks pregnant woman. Therefore, the court appoints Martin Klein as guardian to Nancy Klein. The court notes that considering the underlying very serious brain injury and the undisputed medical testimony as to the high risk to Nancy Klein's life in undergoing this type of contemplated abortion procedure. The responsibility of the guardian is awesome. This court stands adjourned.
they're appealing. This afternoon, they're appealing. Your Honor, I understand the sensitivity of this case. However, the applications of Mr. Miller and Mr. Davis fly in the face of constitutional doctrine and, if granted, would violate the civil liberties of Nancy Klein. It's a woman's constitutional right to Mr. beget Davis. and bear children and not have her judgment dismissed by someone else. Ms. Gardner, restrain your client, please. He's a stranger. This man is a stranger. Mr. These men Klein. are strangers. They're absolute Mr. strangers. Weisfeld, this is my... How can they be able to come in here and be allowed to ruin my life? Fine. What do you want Mr. from me? Fine. What do you want Sir. from us? Sir. They don't know my wife. They don't know me. They don't know my baby. Sir. What do you want? Sir, this is my court, sir. Marsh, please. Your Honor, I apologize for my client. The uh, justices of the court will meet tomorrow and consider the case and render a decision as to uh, whether or not a permanent stay should be granted. Meanwhile, I will grant a temporary stay of the order. I go and check the kitchen cabinets, huh? Okay. <laughs> 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 Hold on a second. It's Tracy Jordan. She thought with the new developments, you might have changed your mind about doing the television show. If I don't have to talk to Davis or Miller, if I don't have to listen to them, I'll do it. Good. Yeah. When? What time? No, here. Be more comfortable. All right, I'll call you. Hey, Stan. It's Marty. I keep sitting here staring at my desk. Have you heard anything yet? No, nothing. Everything is on hold. I'm leaving for home in about half an hour. You want to lift? You know, that would be great. Thanks. See you, buddy. Please. Marty's not here. This is Bradley from the wire service. I've got the ruling. He is here. I'll let you tell him. Reporter, a guy named Bradley, they have the word. Hello, Mr. Bradley. Mr. Klein, I called your house. They told you where to find you. The justice has met. Here's Marino's decision. That's right. Ultimately, the record confirms that these absolute strangers to the Klein family, whatever their motivation, have no place in the midst of this family tragedy. Do you have any comment? Uh, no. No comment. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, this is Martin Klein. May I speak to Dr. K? Dr. K is not in our office. This is her service. Do you care to leave a message? No, the doctor said that she would have her beeper with her, and if I called, you'd put me through to her. I'm sorry. I, I can't disturb her unless you tell me what it's about. No, uh, j just tell her that Martin Klein called, okay? She knows exactly what it's about. She's waiting to hear from me. No Good kidding. Right? Let me hear. Thanks. There we go. Yeah. Ariel, I will be right back, okay? Okay. Okay. Hello. Can I speak with Mr. Klein, please? This is Bradley again. Hold on. 
It's that reporter, Bradley. What's going on? You're not going to believe this. They've gone to the Court of Appeals in Albany. What? They've gone to the Court of Appeals in Albany. They got a temporary stay. Stevenson's at the hospital giving him the word. Any comment? No. What? They've gone to the appeals court in Albany. They got a temporary stay. Stevenson is at the hospital right now giving them the word. I'm going to kill him! All right, all right, all right, all right! Chief Judge, Court of Appeals, Albany, New York. Sir, I can find no better summation of this entire tragedy than to refer to the final words in today's New York Times editorial. What Mr. Davis and Mr. Miller want is to impose their convictions on a heartsick family. They may preach the sanctity of life. What they practice in its name is savagery. Hello. Hello, Marty. Listen, I just got the news. The Court of Appeals ordered that leave to appeal is denied and motions for stay are dismissed as academic. Congratulations. Get going. Thank you. We're on. Oh, oh Marty! Oh. 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 For two days, I heard about the risks and the dangers in court. R.J. trusts you. I just want to get on with this. Tonight, we implant the laminaria and relax the cervix. Tomorrow morning. Would like you to sign a consent form for me, too. I'll only be assisting, but... By the authority vested in me by the Supreme Court of New York, the Appellate Court, and the Court of Appeals. Take good care of her. See this gets to Justice Marshal. Thank you. City desk, this is Bradley. Yeah, they've gone to the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. Yeah, procedure started, but they say it can be reversed. To pediatrics ICU. Dr. Reichman to pediatrics ICU. Everything is fine. I'll be back in the morning. Around nine? The hospital is giving out word that the procedure can be reversed. If they want a $10 million lawsuit on their hands. Thanks. People tend their own gardens. K. Ford? K. Judge Marshall denied the stay in the Klein case. Marshall denied it? That's right. All right. I'll get that out. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. There you go. Justice Scalia? Yes, sir. So what are you going to say on television? Tonight? I don't know. I shouldn't have agreed to it. Yesterday, I wanted to sound off. I'll let America know. 
You know, I'm told that Stevenson is a fine man. A distinguished lawyer. Gave up a hot career to take on this cause. Yeah, crusaders were all fine fellows still galloping across Europe, killing everyone who didn't see things their way. Yeah. You know, in spite of all this hoopla, we're still at square one. No one seems to know how Nancy is going to do. Well, what about the Scalia appeal? I don't know anything about the appeal going to Justice Scalia. Well, we have word that when Marshall turned it down, they took it to Scalia. I suggest you ask your informant with whom the appeal was left. We've been closed down for several hours. I'll check the clerk's office. Security. Hey, Ford called about an envelope for Justice Scalia. What do you know about it? It's not marked urgent. Nobody said anything about an emergency. Yeah, well, it is now. Okay, I'll get it to him right now. What is this? Get his car. There's a lot of them. The hospital says it's begun. Yes. But they say it can be reversed. I know. What is Scalia grant to stay? Their appeal went to Marshall and he turned them down. Then they took it to Scalia. I haven't heard that. But you say it can't be reversed. So the doctors say. Uh, it was started anyway before appeal was in place. How do you feel? Bush. How do you feel about the right to life? Excuse me. How do you feel about Use the right us. to life? Mr. Klein, answer, please. We thought you'd never get here. I, I was getting scared. We've got ten minutes to airtime. What about Davis? He's on the first segment. We're setting you up over by the fireplace. You're not going to wear that on television. No, no. Go change, please. Please. Come in. Word just came in. Scalia denied the appeal. They want you. Our position is you do everything possible to protect the life of the mother and at the same time preserve the life of the child. And what if you can't do both? There are no conditions where you can't do both. Oh, yes, there are. Well, yes, cancerous uterus, you do what you can. No way is that child possibly going to survive. But we're talking right now about a woman who is doing well. Stable in her coma, the child is growing and developing well. And that child, in a week or so, could be delivered live. Now, what happens when she wakes up and asks, where's my child? There's no reason for anyone to go in and crush that child's skull and cut that baby to pieces and suck it out of its mother. Next, the man who has been faced with making the agonizing personal decision in this case, Nancy Klein's husband, Mark. Can you get this on you? That cable's going to wake it up. Let's go with the light, Jay. That's fine. Yeah, the back back. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Stand by, people. Okay, we're ready. That's good. This way. Quiet, please. Let's clear the background. That's fine. Stand by in five, four, three, two. Good evening, Mr. Klein. Good evening. <laughs> It seems that Mr. Davis finally got his vivid details on national television. Mr. Klein, Mr. Davis and Mr. Miller suggested that you could have had two lives, your wives and the child's. Dr. Cannon found only two instances of women in coma, tra traumatic coma, who gave birth. As he put it, two women gave birth to two babies. Two moms died. I couldn't take the risk of letting Nancy become a statistic uh, in the literature of coma and pregnancy. Several doctors gave their opinions that your wife was in no danger from the pregnancy. Actually, what they said was no immediate danger. 
Uh, by definition, that means that she won't die tomorrow. What are we supposed to do? Wait for the emergencies and then hope we can handle them? Besides that, nobody understands. There is nothing to do. There's no operation, no medicine. This wonderful woman is lying there, and she has to do it all of herself. She has to mend herself. She needs all of the energy for herself. Certainly no one who has not been in your tragic position could question. They questioned. They came in and questioned. They had no legal standing when they came in there. I respect their right to differ. But I do not respect zealots who come in and burn your house down, literally or figuratively. They set fire to our lives as if they had set a torch right to us. I made a decision. I will have to live with it. I'm not insensitive. It's my child. But uh, if we had lost in the court and Nancy was forced to carry the child full term and died, I would have killed. Everything went well. No problems. Nancy's in the recovery room, and you can see her in a little while. Thank you. Good luck. She looks so much more peaceful. Maybe it's just the way that I see her. Mm. We'll evaluate responses to speech, movement, visual stimuli over a long period of time. You'll have to start measuring time, not in days or months, but years. Time I've got. <laughs> 